Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Specialist Performance Tester Certification. We are in chapter two talking about the performance measurement fundamentals and continuing ahead with 2.1, the typical matrix collected in performance testing and continuing ahead under the same segment with the subtopic that is 2.1.2, collecting performance measurements and matrices. As a part of this tutorial, we are going to understand several set of measurements and matrices which can be collected as a part of the performance testing. In previous tutorial, we understood that why matrices are important and measurements should be collected. But here we are going to have a look on some of the typical examples of these measurements and matrices which can be a part of your performance testing. Now to begin with, as with any form of measurement, it is possible to obtain and express matrix in a very precise ways. Therefore, any of the matrix and measurement described in this particular section can sh and should be defined to be a meaningful in a particular context. That means it's just not really mandatory that anything which you're measuring is a matrix. It has to add value to your overall analysis should return you something in terms of determining the performance of grades or degrades and should help you to overcome uh, the performance challenges and definitely define the quality in the performance term. So every any single unit of that measurement and matrix which you are trying to make use of must be well declared and with all the details that how this matrix or measurement is going to help us while doing the performance testing of this application. Now, this is a matter of performing initial test and learning which matrix need to be further refined and which need to be added. So initial testing can definitely help you to decide on this, that though we have around you know, 50 or 100 matrices available, which one are the important one to be included and which are those matrices which are already included but needs to be further refined to have precise measurements. Because when it comes to automation, we are already talking about accuracy and precision, but when it comes to performance, we live upon that. And we need to make sure that how accurate we can be in terms of determining the overall performance of the application. Now, for example, the matrix of response time likely will be in any set of performance matrix. However, to be meaningful and actionable, the response time matrix will need to be further defined in terms of time of day, number of concurrent users, and the amount of data being processed and so forth. So as you see, response time can be just one of the matrix which calculates the amount of time taken in order to respond for a particular request. But with that comes a lot of other information to extend it further. That is what time of day it was executed so you got this response time. What number of users were working at that point of time to get this response time. So because sometimes your concurrent users play a vital role in that and so on. So making it more precise to the point can definitely help the team to overcome the challenges and definitely assist for a better performance. Now here, the matrices collected in a specific performance test will vary based on certain criteria. That is like business context, which deals with business process, customer and user behavior and stakeholder expectations. Operational context, which definitely deals with technology and how it is being used and the test objectives, which are totally dependent on what we are measuring all about. Now, for example, the matrix chosen for the performance testing of an international e-commerce website will differ from those chosen for the performance testing of an embedded system and used to control medical device functionality. Now, you know that from this foundation level syllabus that testing is context dependent. And of course, e-commerce website is tested differently than a medical device functionality right? And we need to be sure about such things as well. So defining the context and the necessary matrices are equally important. A common way to categorize performance measurements and matrix is to consider the technical environment, business environment, or operational environment in which the assessment of performance is needed. And that's what we will be elaborating further to understand that what kind of matrices we can actually have in order to accomplish that. 
So here we get started with the categories of measurement and matrix included below are the ones which are commonly obtained from performance testing. And here we don't need elaboration. We just need to remember this as K1 points that what exactly are the different matrix which can be used here. So beginning with the first category that is technical environment. Now performance matrices will vary by the type of technical environment as shown in the following list. For example, web-based, mobile, internet of things, desktop client devices, server-side processing, mainframe, database, networks, the nature of software running in the environment, kind of like embedded systems or so. So technical environment plays a vital role in order to identify based on what number of, what performance matrices must be used. And depending on these environments, the different set of matrices will be required to be applied as a measurement throughout the execution. The second thing here we are talking about the matrix include the following for these environments. So what are those matrices which can actually be used uh, throughout these different environments? For example, response time. Example, per transaction, per concurrent user, page load times and so on. Resource utilization, which is completely the resources of your system which you are using to test the entire performance testing. Include CPU, memory, network bandwidth, network latency, available disk space, input output rate, idle and busy threads. So all these can be a part of your resource utilization to judge that where exactly it went wrong. Similarly with throughput rate of the key transaction, which includes the number of transactions that can be processed in a given period of time. That's how you basically measure the throughput of a particular you know, scenario. Batch processing time, example, wait times, throughput times, database response times, completion times. Number of errors impacting the performance. Now, errors are something which can be achieved through the data which you provide, probably due to the runtime error of a V user, or maybe the network availability and lot many other things. So the number of errors which impact, which can also be one of the parameters to count that due to these errors, these are the things which has happened and probably we have seen a different impact on the outcome. Completion time, that is the elapsed time, the total time taken to perform a particular task. Now for creating, for reading, updating, or deleting data. So all that CRUD operation can be measured here with the completion time. The background load on shared resources, especially in virtualized environment, which is definitely to deal with the background load because virtual environments are definitely on the clouds. And here you are trying to use a resource which are from a different interface altogether. And uh, software matrices, which are like code complexity, how complex the code was, which is definitely going to uh, consume a lot of your time and resources. And that's where the performance can be a poor. And you can consider that as well as one of the matrix to measure the overall performance of the system. On the other hand, when we talk about the business environment uh, from the business or functional perspective, performance matrices may include the following, but of course not limited to business process efficiency for example the speed of the performance on overall business process including normal alternate and exceptional use case flow so that goes completely from the business process point of view uh, working from the overall application interface and making a user work on that throughput of the data transaction and other inputs of the work performed for example order processed per hour like if you're talking about an ATM server, number of ATM transactions took place in an hour's time can definitely give you that throughput of the data. And also like data rows added per minute, like in inserting of any kind of inputs, for example, a lot of transaction or new account is being created. So number of entries added to the database could also be a part of this. Service level agreement, that is SLA compliance or violation rates, how many SLAs were basically met and how many were violated and you can also keep an count on that scope of usage deals with percentage of the global or national users conducting tasks at a given time uh, that generally goes from the distribution of uh, you know user interface from different geographical distribution concurrency of usage 
the number of user concurrently performing a task and that goes with the count of people which are simultaneously logged in at any point of time on your product and you see the behavior of the product at that point of time timing of the usage which is the number of orders processed during a peak load time so this all goes with the number of uh, amount of time taken in order to perform a particular task at different uh, time of the day and you do make sure that they give you real statistics to decide that what could be possibly wrong when there are there is a hike of number of users are probably at that particular point of time in, in, in the day you do have these variations well coming to the operational environment the operational aspect of performance testing focuses on the tasks that are generally not considered to be user facing in the nature but include the following so what do you mean by that because this goes from the back end point of view and does not really go at the ui interface and this is not user facing it's more of the back end operations which are done behind the screen when user works on the front end so some of those uh, matrices are like operational processes for example the time required for environment to start up backup shutdown and resumption times system restoration the time required to restore data from a backup which is more of a, like a recovery testing and so on alerts and warnings the time needed for the system to issue an alert or warning to the user of the system so all these things can be one of the matrices for the operational environment which can help you to determine that how exactly these uh, you know performance can be measured to an adequate way so what we basically want you to understand from this tutorial is the list of several matrices which can be opted and of course these are not limited to there is a big list of all the measurements which you can include and further refine them to meet your detailed expectations from the scenario so you can include them and observe them as a part of your analysis well that's all from this particular tutorial team should you have anything else feel free to comment below I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.